Maximus Analysis here for January 3rd, 2017, and I want to wish everybody a happy uh, new year. Hopefully everybody had a great holiday season, um, and want to get started in the charts. So first thing first, again, we're looking at the ES. We usually start with the ES. I'm going to stick to the weekly time frame for now, just to give perspective, because again, you know, one day of action shouldn't make or break your decision or your views in regards to trends. Now, we see that we have, uh, again, my resistance point is 22.72 on the uh, <clears throat> on the ES on the upside. Again, I want to see if they're going to break out the low. Again, you had a gap up because of the holiday season. And uh, again, the high of last week or the last session was 22.70, uh, 22, basically 70. So again, it's it's a big area that I'm watching here, but I still think that there's a lot more pulling back that needs to be done before uh, I would not take a long here either way. I just again, I like to trade the extremes. I would rather trade down here than trade up here because again, um, we've seen in the past that these things can drift up or not, but I'd rather not be, I'd rather trade in the extreme and wait for a pullback. If you miss a trade, it's just a part of trading. So again, we're just going to continue to look at that, see if they don't get below this low area, which we have is the 22 uh, 2245 area that you see here to the right again this was the target area that we're just watching so again uh, not to you know overcomplicate things uh, just a matter of just looking at the ES holistically and with the big picture in mind to make sure that you are having a, a good outlook on what's going on versus looking at the first hour or half an hour of the markets and then getting completely uh, overjoyed so again I want to show you what that looks like again on the uh, you had everybody you know super bullish and then it faded and probably ran a lot of stops and then came back up again that doesn't mean that they no, don't go back and take this out but you know a lot of this euphoria just from the first of the year a lot of these people are probably talking over thanksgiving or excuse me christmas dinner and blah blah blah, blah. so again we want to see how much juice they have going back into this area uh back into this uh, this trend line right here and see if they they come back down so again We'll continue to watch that for the ES. <clears throat> so the next one is the NQ. And again, it was kind of all over the place as well. Again, the target area for me is up here. Um, and you can see that last time that we had such sideways, very bullish move here. And it's still kind of within this range. So think about it. It's still within this, you know, slightly above October low um, at the end of October's high so hasn't really moved much at all it's a very frustrating range again you will have movement on the high beta names you know your Tesla your Amazon your Facebook your, you know your um, Priceline Priceline is a very wicked one actually Priceline movement can be very bipolar or binary to say the least during the days so again I prefer to look at those on a higher time frame because it's just it moves too much too quickly uh, but anyway, uh, looking at this, you can see again, I'm not taking up. I'm going to take the trade down here. If I took this trade, I'd be annoyed. I'd probably be rolling my stop up, unfortunately. So we'll look half back. We bring that about half back of this big bars range is about 4,800. Also puts us kind of in line 4,825 with this previous high and above uh, this one is 4730 or 4740. We'll look at those areas, but it hasn't. It's been a lot of movement but it hasn't moved the index that much. And I'd rather look at the index because point blank, you know, I, I don't want to scan every day. The reason being is that I, I, I think of it like people at the pit. Again, when you're on the pit, you're a pit trader for corn. Let's say you're a pit trader for the ES. You're a pit trader for crude. You stay in the pit from, you know, let's say electronic sessions from 9 to 2.30. After they, at 2.30, they don't go over to the ES pit and start doing stuff they go home so master at least one first and i say master the index first and you can use the spy or spx options or common uh, and then you move into other things versus trying to figure out every day unless you're day trading or you know hourly day trading can mean you know a couple hours as well so six seven hours that's a swing trade but all using a day trading type of time frame on hourly or something like that and then you know, you kind of just go from there. So uh, we we'll just continue to watch this NQ and uh, watch from there. But again, study these. I'd rather have five names that I'm watching 
versus 15 that I'm trying to hunt down and set alerts and stuff. So um, we had a, if I took the range and if you guys look at this, uh, if I took this range right here and I paste it, you can see that we're at the top of the third one. So again, you know, uh, just kind of something to think about. We're at the top of the third part of the range. So again, I, I'm not you know, again, this is an epic move. Uh, this is from the election and um, epic move for the upside. But I'm not looking for little small bull flags. Again, that's not an extreme. I wanted to pull back to where everybody's starting to get scared. And then we start looking at headlines that are negative. That's when we look to get long something. Again, it might not be the most comfortable time, but that's the best risk reward. And that's what I want to look for. So the YM, you can see that, again, they're flirting around the 20,000. I was kind of wondering why they just hit it, you know, but either way, they came close. So it's still a possibility. Uh, gold is holding these levels that we, we spoke about. Uh, again, we had these key levels that, again, you know, you want to make sure you're looking way, 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 way back at things. Um, and again, this was this was a critical level here. OK, it broke down, came back up again. It was a critical breakout level here. So I kind of just put it on and I have these as some uh, levels that I watch some key ones and it came and it bounced so right now. Just want to see how much juice we're going to have going into the week. Again, a break of the the uh, 1180, 1189, 1189. 40 is a critical level for me to be watching here for this week again i don't know if it's going to get up that high but again we'll continue to watch and go from there again the week has just begun <clears throat> so the other names that we're going to be looking at again the british pound we see that again i don't know if they're going to create a double bottom but if they break above this high that'll be a high low from here so again it'll be a, a low risk reward or, or give me a high risk reward if it breaks above here you can put your stop below here or if you want you can put your stop below this one if you want to give it some space but um watching this again with the weekly time frame you're looking more at wednesday to friday in order to put on trades unless just something quickly happens but uh keep those those things in mind uh you have the euro uh, again, it's holding uh, right now. Again, it's it's a hard area. We'll look and see where this goes. Um, and these were major levels that I had here because we've broken below some critical levels on the uh, the euro. So we'll continue to watch uh, that one. You know, manifests itself. Uh, you have natural gas. Again, we'll see. You know how to big big gap down and again we'll watch to see if it's going to hold this 200 day moving average uh here and hold this trend line but again it's very exhausted and after four huge weeks up uh consolidating for basically the four to five a lot of people will try to take this breakout a lot of people probably got stopped out today because of them just wanting to bull flag it and say all right break up a high but mm -mm. you know again wait for the trade to come to you wait for a trade like this pulling back wait for a trade like this pulling back um not the most comfortable trade but again it's the, the trade that you need to take if you're looking to get a better risk reward versus i again i despise breakouts because the person that took the breakout up here unless he just grabbed profits for one or two weeks is now probably stopped out definitely stopped out because they uh you know they, they cleaned him out with this long wick right here but they put this stop right below the breakout area it's just a very low risk reward type of deal uh you have silver again holding this level we want to see where they close this week again you had very low volume like this last week but a break of a low break of a high excuse me that correlates with the break of this high swing high as well so you want to see if they can close above this uh, October 2015 area so again just continuing to watch this also looking at the bonds uh, I don't know if they're dead cap bouncing right now quite honestly I mean again it's a good area for risk reward I don't know if they're dead cap bouncing or not but we'll see because this is a significant it is a significant move uh, we broke one two weeks back three weeks hmm, so again we want to see how much juice they have going into that and then again there's the zbzn if uh 
and the ZF and the ZN. And again, those are the bonds. But again, you also want to look at the interest rates as well, which you could probably get on a site like StockCharts.com, uh, which is a pretty good site in regards to looking at that. So uh, we'll continue to watch this. Uh, TLT actually had a pretty decent day today. I uh, just want to see if we could get back above the 200-day moving average. Um, or is it just just a you know if it's going to be something short, I'd rather short it around these levels here. But uh, we'll continue to watch um, how this one goes into the week. So again, uh, keeping this short and brief, I'm not going to be doing videos every day. Um, I'm going to do videos when I see stuff, probably once or twice a week. You can always email me if you have anything. But again, I want to make sure I'm looking at the big picture, and I'm I'm not going to do what everybody else does in regards to the daily charts because I find that. Um, People focus on that and miss the big picture. I'd rather say, all right, you know, if you follow my stuff, you know that I'm trying to give big picture things versus when everybody, you know, starting to look at the headlines and such and such, uh, they get it, they get excited and start looking at things. So again, last but not least, again, IWM. I don't know if they're going to continue any higher, but they've blew past the target. Uh, this was the buy right here, and again, I did a do a newsletter, which I'm going to start doing again. For those that do like it, I just have had a very rough three to four weeks uh, in regards to some personal uh, family stuff that I've had to deal with in regards to health stuff. So uh, bear with me. Um, but uh, again, we'll see how the year goes. Again, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I email me. I'll email you back. And uh, again, I have my website up and stuff like that, but I got to get this stuff in order first before I even think about doing something like that, quite honestly. But I'll be doing the videos. I'll start doing the videos. And if I see something of significance, I will be posting. It could be daily, could be every other day, it could be twice a week. Uh, I'm going to, you know, put the pace based on the action versus putting something every day and it's just noise. So. Again, doing something a little different for 2017, but I got to work around the schedule that I have now. So, again, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to email me if you leave something in the comments. And I uh, hope that uh, these are helping you. Take care.